I love Ken Burns. Is this Ken Burns? No, this is last week's Toy Man. Oh. It's just that a lot of the people who saw it commented, they said it looks like a Ken Burns show. Oh. And I'm afraid I may have been somewhat influenced by Ken Burns because I've been transferring all that old footage, you know, the old footage mm -hmm. that I've been going through. And a lot of it is stuff that we shot with Ken Burns on the Drango Silverton with Dan Markoff's engine, the Eureka Palisade number no. four. Hmm. So I kind of had Ken Burns on the brain, and maybe that affected last How week's show. How long ago has that been? 1994. Oh my gosh, that's been a while back. Yeah, yeah. Another space and time. Another space and time. Wow. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. That was back when Dan was running his engine a lot. He's not running it anymore. Aww. I guess because he's been working on the passenger car. Well, if you saw the show yeah. where he's building the passenger car there that's in Henderson. beautiful. Wow, that's neat. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's going to be running the engine some more. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with the engine, but yeah. it's there in his backyard in Las Vegas. Anyway, for this particular show, it's interesting because Ken Burns normally directs, mm. Steve Ives produces, Buddy the Mudman that's just his nickname, the Mud Man. The he, Mud he, Man? He fell in mud on oh. one of the shoots. <laughs> Buddy Squires is, is the camera. <laughs> anyway, uh, Steve Ives and Ken Burns flipped roles. And, and Ken Burns was producing, Steve Ives was directing. This is Steve Ives that you see right here with Buddy. Ah. And, uh, <laughs> so anyway, it's really neat. And, and the series is The West, 1994. Wow. That turned out really neat. And one of the episodes has Eureka Palisade number four in oh, it. Oh, I love it. So while they were filming that, I was filming them. It was there really fun. Really <laughs> fun. So check this out. It was late September in 1994 when a bunch of us headed up to the Durango and Silverton. Dan had made a deal to lease his services and his locomotive to Ken Burns and their production company to use in the PBS series, The West. We unloaded the engine in Durango and pretty much spent the whole night getting her ready to go for the next morning. It was actually really fun spending the whole night in the roundhouse. Uh, it seems the air pump had broken apart and Dan actually machined a whole new part over the course of the evening. And by morning, we were ready to go. As always, the usual suspects of men and women were traveling with the locomotive. Dan has some friends that seem to always show up when the locomotive's running. bought this thing in a fire sale. It had burned up in a western-themed casino near Las Vegas. Dan spotted it and took it home and completely restored it. I have seen grown men cry when we run by with this thing. I mean, it, it's amazing. Uh, they, they just had this thing from their early days of their life, wondering what it was like, you know, when they're playing with the uh, model trains and whatnot. Hey, I was no exception to it. And then, lo and behold, one day this crazy guy from Las Vegas, Nevada, is out there with the real thing. And, you know, in a strange sort of way, I feel like I contributed to a revival of this type of equipment. I mean, you know, we now have not only Eureka running, Dave Cloakey back in Elgin, Illinois, has built two 440 standard gauge engines that are beautiful. Uh, Chris DeWitt has restored the Inyo uh, up in Carson City. And just next month, in May, he's rolling out the Glenbrook, which was also built in 1875. It's a Mogul 260 freight engine, but he's done a magnificent job of it. Well, the very first thing we did was take the locomotive up the canyon because that's where the guys wanted to film it. Well, 
We grabbed a few shots here in the canyon on our way up to Silverton, but the real shooting was going to be tomorrow morning at Silverton. Here we have Steve and Buddy lining up a shot. They spend hours lining up each shot and getting it exactly the way they want. In this case, it had snowed just a little bit the night before. It was really, really cold, but that made the steam stand out really nice. It looked amazing. We had all spent the night in a hundred-year-old hotel up here in Silverton. Really kind of got us in the mood. Although uh, sleeping on a hundred-year-old bed is a, well, it's a little challenging, isn't it? Compared to the locomotive, though, the hotel was frankly modern. The locomotive was built in the 1870s, just after the Civil War. The locomotive had been modernized and modified over the years, but when Dan got it, well, you know, it had been completely wrecked, so he figured he could take it all the way back to original, or at least almost original. He wanted to keep air brakes on it. But generally speaking, what you see is what you would have seen in the late 1870s if you spotted Eureka running in Nevada. The car is from that same era. It was a private car owned by General Palmer, a Civil War general, who was the man who built the Denver and Rio Grande, and this was his private business car. Still on the Rio Grande here at the Durango and Silverton, and they had loaned us the car to use in the filmmaking. How about that? On this shoot day, I felt like it was my private car. I was in here with my film equipment. Back down in Durango, it had not snowed, and so the fall colors were all still out. For this day, the railroad loaned us a Civil War era caboose. Now normally, something like this would attract a lot of people, but we were here after the usual tourist season and there hadn't been any publicity. A few people knew about it, and mostly these were people traveling with us. Right at the base of the mountain is this place, Hermosa, and there is a water tank here. Notice that it's a, a tank car. The old wooden water tank is sort of out of commission. But it is necessary to stop here for water. You also want to oil around and check all the bearings. You don't want to start up the hill until you're 100% sure that you're ready for that difficult climb. Steam locomotives do go through quite a bit of fuel, but they go through an awful lot of water, and so you're stopping for water all the time. Notice that the Eureka here runs on wood, not coal, and so Dan had brought a couple of cords of wood with him to use on the filming. Okay, here I am on a different train. The railroad had actually loaned us this train to use for a support vehicle for our filming. It was being pulled by number 478 here, which is a K28 style locomotive. Very modern compared to the Eureka sitting right alongside it. So we headed back uphill, this time with the little caboose, to get some more shots in the canyon. We met the daily passenger train on its way up to Silverton. Now keep in mind, nobody knew we were out here. And oh, the looks on the faces of the passengers as they came rolling by a Civil War era locomotive just sitting there on the siding. Well, if you haven't seen the PBS series, The West, you should look for it. It's really good. Typical Steve Ives, Ken Burns project, therefore brilliant. The locomotive is only in one of the episodes, but you know, even the other ones are worth watching. 
But how fortunate we were to be able to come up here with this locomotive and have access to this railroad and this magnificent equipment and just do some real serious screwing around. Once in a great while, life hands you the opportunity to be part of something that's truly amazing. And this one was made possible by the fact that some people saved this railroad and this equipment, Dan restored this engine, and some other guys wanted to make a movie. Well, this week's show sort of reminds me of the old Maine joke. Oh, oh, Maine joke? Yeah, yeah. So this guy from California is in Maine, and he gets hopelessly lost, because you can do that in Maine, especially if you're from California. <laughs> and he sees a farmer standing by the side of the road with his pitchfork. And so the farmer, uh, the, the guy from California, pulls up to the farmer. Mm -hmm. And he says, excuse me, can you tell me where this road goes? And the farmer looks at him and he says, why, it don't go nowhere. It <laughs> stays right here. <laughs> so we're staying right here because it's snowing and people it's are crashing terrible. cars. And there's a winter storm and warning. Advisories and, and warnings. God. And, uh... So rather than go out and risk life and limb and we just stayed in transferred video. We've been right. going through all this old video and having and fun. And watching with it. all this stuff. I haven't even seen it before. Yeah, it's fun because right. that was a long time 1994, ago. 1994, was it? Some of, that was 94, but th this is some of the latest. This is the most modern footage. The, wow. the earliest stuff. Uh, well, I've got stuff going back to the 60s, but. Well, that's true. Mostly it's stuff from the 80s and 90s. The, the All the 80s and the early 90s. Wow. This was 94. Wow. But that was really neat being on the Ken Burns shoot. And oh, everything no like kidding. That. That was fun. That's really fun. Yeah. Some significant screwing around no there. Kidding. Yes. If uh, you guys haven't been over to the channel, do pop on over to the channel. And of course, what you really need to do is subscribe Absolutely. because then you will be notified when we put something up mm -hmm. and reminded to go to the channel mm -hmm. and check out the 180, 180 something. There's over 180 now. Yeah. So you want to be a subscriber, and you can become a subscriber by clicking on the blue button. Zoink! That blue button right there takes you to the channel, makes you a subscriber, mm -hmm. makes you immediately cool. Right. And you want all of that. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet, but we hope you didn't find it boring. And we will be back here again in one week mm -hmm. with some more major screwing around. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.